What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Whatever News. Subscribe and hit that bell to get more. Yeah, yeah. And first story on the docket. Now, a lot of people are very much so excited about the return of the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War anime, and just in general, more information on Bleach. It's been a little bit since we last had that big chapter, No Breath from Hell, that Taite Kubo released, which takes place after the end of the Bleach manga. And then, of course, right now we're waiting for the return of the Thousand Year Blood War with part two of the anime. And apparently, Kubo is going to be having something to say here very soon. It says here, Taite Kubo to reveal new Bleach information on May 28th. It's been a few months since the Bleach Styles in your Blood War TV anime left the airwaves and yet the thirst for more Bleach is as high as ever. Creator Taite Kubo is here though to quench your thirst by revealing more information on the next part of the series on the first Crew B Inside program on May 28th. The first Crew B Inside will be hosted by Chiaki Matsuzawa with Taite Kubo's Bleach Styles in your Blood War anime director Tomohisa Taguchi an editor from Weekly Shonen Jump and voice actors Masakazu Morita, aka Ichigo, and Noriaki Sugiyama, aka Ishida, in attendance. So this is going to be a pretty big deal. And I'm imagining, of course, this is going to be able to promote the Thousand Year Blood War. Maybe Kubo is going to give some insight on things that we didn't know and maybe what to expect in terms of some possible changes from the manga to the anime. I'm also hoping that maybe there's a little bit of insight on what he got coming next for the manga, considering we're still waiting for the next continuation of the chapters and I'm hoping that considering the anime starts in July maybe this is going to coincide with a Bleach manga chapter return I'm just saying that one can hope right then a quick update in terms of real world things regarding President Biden and student loans because y'all know one of his big campaign promises was that he was going to clear student loan debt for several people and it never actually went into fruition it was a back and forth I think he ended up taking a little bit off he didn't really do exactly what he had said said well apparently as re-elections are approaching president biden's administration says that 55 billion dollars in student loan forgiveness have been approved and many more will be coming so opposed to just doing it outright he's trying to you know lean that you know dangle that carrot so to speak for the next re-elections and say hey yo i did 55 billion we're gonna be doing a lot more which at the end of the day that was supposed to be already you know done like you had this whole big promise and then after you got elected it was like wait no hold on uh no you like we'll see what happens dog you really want to get that re-election popping without actually i don't know debating like historically the presidents have done just a thought there just a thought and hopefully this does go in because there's a lot of people that really could use that right now a lot of people got student loans debts and all sorts of stuff that they need taken care of so yeah biden get up and do it let me know if you got any student loan debt and this actually went through and cleared out some of that money for you moving forward very big story regarding netflix in particular in case you don't know there's a massive writer strike going on right now loads of tv shows late night talk shows all sorts of stuff are basically right now on hiatus because of the writer strike which is very similar to the writer strike that went down in 2008 where a lot of writers were like yo dog we're not getting paid enough well this time around not only i believe it's a disagreement regarding payments and royalties and stuff like that but also one of the big debates and one of the big arguments they're having things like chat gpt and a lot of ai are capable of creating scripts and a lot of people in hollywood are like yo that's going to be you know causing an issue we don't want that involved in our contracts we don't want that involved in general in the industry so the writer's strike now more than ever is at a very big and important and possibly you could throw the argument historical point because if a AI becomes a massive staple in writing and whatnot, then it's going to cause a lot of writers to lose their jobs because really all you would need at that point is basically an AI and a few people to correct it and voila you got scripts for days it says here Netflix contract sparks ire over voice acting amid WGA strike and AI debates Hollywood is in trouble if you haven't heard yet the entire film industry in the US is on shaky legs right now following concerning talks of AI and entertainment pressure in Hollywood erupted last week as the Writers Guild of America went on strike everything from film to TV and beyond is now in flux as major studios across the US 
nonetheless have yet to find common ground with the WGA executives. And now Netflix has sparked anger online as one of its controversial contracts has surfaced. The update comes from the New York Times as the publication dove deep into the ongoing war in Hollywood. Some of the biggest studios in America have resisted demands from the WGA regarding fair pay in the streaming era, but issues have come down with advancing tech. To be specific, AI issues were brought up in this year's WGA negotiations, and the New York Times says a contract by Netflix shows how real the threat of tech can be for voice actors. According to the WGA, the group is adamant that no literary material produced by members can be touched by chatbots like ChatGPT or other AI tools. The group is also demanding studios not use AI for generating source material that would then be adapted into scripts and the like. In the New York Times article, a representative from SAG Optra Union that represents actors in Hollywood said, AI is going beyond simple source material. Some members have flagged contracts that include clauses that give studios the right to use their voices to generate new performances. So what does that look like in Inc.? The New York Times shared a clause from a recent Netflix contract that gives the studio, quote unquote, free use of a simulation of a talent's voice. By all technologies and processes now known or hereafter developed throughout the universe and in perpetuity. Duncan Crabtree Island, the executive director of SAG AFTRA, says these clauses could snowball into obsoletes for actors just starting their careers. As you can imagine, these clauses are damning to whoever signs them regardless of their fame. This goes double for most voice actors who stay in animation and anime for work. There is a greater safety net for actors like Chris Pratt voicing Mario in animation versus lesser known actors in the public eye as technology advances tools like ai will shift the world in ways i don't want to say wonderful like this article but some boundaries must be set in place for creatives and now that netflix contract has surfaced public opinion is swirling amidst the ongoing wga strike and i'm gonna say that wholeheartedly that whole thing that they could basically replicate your voice and use it forever and ever in any galaxy in any universe in the milky way um no this is horrible that that's horrible right there flat out that is just taking advantage the, that contract i can't even believe my eyes reading that right now because that basically means that whoever has already signed that their voice is forever locked in like they don't ever need to be hired again as long as the person that owns that or the company that owns that you know chat gpt recreation or that ai recreation of their vocals that's it this type of language has been in contracts for many years now in terms of at the very least using people's stuff or owning people's stuff in perpetuity like the music industry has been using this for a long time of hey we own your masters forever and always <laughs> in perpetuity in any universe in any galaxy we own it all so that way if we ever you know do space travel or multi-dimensional stuff we own your stuff and now the writers guild and in particular this netflix contract is showing you that yeah, this is extending to other avenues and other areas and it's just not right. Moving forward, something big regarding One Piece, in particular the Netflix live action. Y'all know over the last couple of weeks, some rumors that turned out to be false were circulating regarding the One Piece live action having some terrible testing again. That was false. Seemingly, everybody came out and cleared up that that was not true. However, uh, it seems as though Oda himself, H.R. Oda, creator of One Piece, came out and broke his silence regarding the whole situation in terms of the live action itself. H.R. Oda shares update on live action One Piece series and confirms the episode count. Netflix shared an update for the Hollywood live action series of Eichiro Oda's One Piece manga. The update is a message from original creator Oda, who is also serving as an executive producer. Oda states that the show is still scheduled to debut in 2023, but it will not launch until he is satisfied. He added that each and every entity involved is working in sync. He also clarifies the series will have 8 episodes as opposed to 10 episodes originally reported. And it says here, I've been working with Tomorrow Studio this is all from Oda, by the way. And Netflix for quite some time now. Even though they understand each of the characters, we obviously come from very different cultures. So when it comes to entertainment, we have different codes, skill sets, and aims. Sometimes it can be frustrating for both sides. It felt like we're all trying to get on the same place, so how come we're not on the same wavelength? There was even a time when I thought, is a foreign production even possible? Now this might seem like it's coming out of nowhere, but we've been hard at work this entire time, and now each and every entity involved is working in sync. We're finally here. Considering my expected lifespan, I believe this is the last chance to bring One Piece to the entire world. If we're going to do it, I want to be able to supervise things while I'm still active. That's why I agreed to the live action adaptation of One Piece back in 2016. 
2016. Since then, Netflix has committed enormous resources to the production. It was announced that the show will launch in 2023, but they promised that we won't launch it until I'm satisfied. The entire cast and crew spanning various countries are brimming with love for One Piece. They're burning with passion, and I've reminded everyone involved that this should be fun. We're in the final process right now of finishing all eight episodes. We'll be setting sail very soon. And that is interesting because I could have sworn it was initially announced as 10 episodes and that was eight. So the two episodes get cut for budget reasons or what's up there. But either way, I feel like if this doesn't work out, considering everything that Oda has been saying, like Oda is really putting his neck on the line for this one. Oda is really much so adamant in saying that he's very involved, even with this letter right here saying that we're all in sync. If this bombs if this one is hated if this one doesn't get the recipe right then i think it's safe to say that for the most part we're a long and, and too far as a way off of anime to live adaptations working because again if you got the original creator like this isn't dragon ball evolution where toriyama was supposedly on the set and then they reports came back that he wasn't on the set it was a hundred million dollar budget turns out it was only 30 million dollar budget like this isn't that so if everything is supposedly aligning, Oda is very happy seemingly with what's going on, the fact that they're not going to launch without Oda's blessing, then that means that this should ideally work. This should be the best live action adaptation of any anime or manga of all time. Will it be? Time will tell, but this is definitely something that is a major testament to if this doesn't work, then by golly, live action may just not be the thing for anime and manga, period, because you got unlimited resources, you got the original creator, you got everybody working in sync, seemingly, you got a lot of things going for yourself. Let's see what happens, though. Next up, just a small update on something that I thought was pretty notable. Apparently, the mixtape platform Spinrilla has been ordered to shut down and pay $50 million for copyright infringement. Now, there's a few different mixtape spots. I know, of course, datpiff.com, which I thought was shut down, but apparently people said that they haven't shut down. And then Spinrilla, there's a lot of people that really don't know what mixtapes actually were back in the day, but essentially a mixtape, a hip-hop mixtape at the very least, would be somebody rapping over other people's beats and then uploading it like that was that simple so like if Lil Wayne had I don't know the lollipop record and somebody hopped on and rapped over the instrumental to the lollipop record along with like 10 other different songs that they're rapping on other people's beats that would be a mixtape but nowadays because of the way things went and with streaming and whatnot they pretty much made the mixtape obsolete unless it's 100% original music so some websites like thatpiff.com and Spinrilla are still operating on the old formula of people rapping on other people's beats and because of the copyright involved in that and copyright infringement yeah it's pretty much saying that there's damn near no room at this point online and in general for the mixtape formula unless you're gonna sell them hand to hand and risk that because we know what happened to dj drama many years ago when the feds raided his plates over mixtapes it looks like the original mixtape just doesn't have a home anymore because situations like this 50 million dollars i mean maybe you could throw the argument that spinrilla was getting money and a lot of mixtapes are basically for promotional use only and that's how they were trying to skate by but if spinrilla is getting millions of dollars off of this and has been then i guess r.i.p uh spinrilla and last but certainly not least i thought that this was a very dope story to hear apparently nfl star jamal williams hosts a naruto charity auction with voice actress miley flanagan which aka that's the english voice actress for naruto nfl star jamal williams noted naruto fan will hold a charity auction for naruto merchandise alongside naruto uzumaki the english dub voice actress miley flanagan the auction will take place through on May 9th at 8 p.m. EST on the Whatnot Livestream shopping platform. The items up for auction will include signed Funko Pops, action figures, manga box sets, headbands, and custom sneakers. Sai Kickstradamus Amezkua, one of the world's most influential sneaker customizers for athletes and celebrities, designed two unique pairs of Air Force Ones for Williams. Williams commissioned two unique pairs of Nike Air Force One sneakers, one featured Naruto Uzumaki and the other featured Sasuke Uchiha. One pair will be auctioned during
during the live stream damn i wish i could get my hands on one of those i bet they look fly all proceeds will go towards the jamal williams foundation a new nonprofit founded by williams to provide financial and community support to assist in youth development and help meet the needs of those facing food insecurities the live stream auction on whatnot marks the first fundraiser event for the foundation the stories and principles of naruto have been hugely influential for me both on and off the field naruto faced a lot of adversity and was able to move beyond that and become this powerful force of positivity and kindness jamal williams commented outside of naruto's impact on my own life i have so much love for naruto and the anime communities these are my people i'm excited to partner with whatnot and miley to celebrate and rally fans around the franchise all for a great cause because i'm passionate about it williams is an avid anime fan the head of his twitter profile features an image of gara from naruto and he recently tweeted about his ascent up to the mountain of one piece episodes in a viral clip january he introduced himself as the swag kazakage leader of the hidden village of the den before the detroit lions game so laugh for this one i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day subscribe and hit that bell to get more yeah